fish. <laughs> this week on Kentucky Field, fishing, swimming, hunter safety, archery. These are just a few of the activities Kentucky's conservation camps offer. But the fun doesn't end there. This is a week that will last a lifetime. It's a pretty fish. Beautiful. This pond is plum floated with frogs. They're everywhere in here. <laughs> yeah, this is a good fish right here. Really good fish. Come here, girl. Hey, boy. That's a big rabbit. Nice job. Yes! Yes! <laughs> My first musket. <laughs> Here it goes! Boom! Oh, oh. Oh. Wow, that happened fast. Hello, and welcome to Kentucky Field. I'm your host, Chad Miles. Join us as we journey the Commonwealth in search of outdoor adventure. The Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife has been operating conservation camps for over 70 years, teaching hunting, fishing, and why conservation is so important. For the nearly half a million Kentuckians that have attended conservation camps, I hope this show brings back some great memories. Conservation is wise management of your natural resources. Of course, wildlife being one of those natural resources and the trees and the water and things like that there, we teach kids to care about that. We can have all the laws we want, we can have all the biologists we want, but if we don't change the minds and have them appreciate what is out here, then I don't think the laws will do any good, and I don't think studying it will do any good. We have to change their feelings about wildlife, make them care more about it, and that is more difficult today because they're getting drawn away from the outdoors, spending more time indoors. For many of these kids, this is the first experience that they have outdoors. So conservation is about using that resource, but using it wisely. A conservation camp is an outdoor skills camp. We allow fourth, fifth, and sixth grade students of Kentucky or residents of Kentucky to attend for a Monday through Friday session and learn skills such as survival, nature study, boating and canoeing, archery, firearm safety, fishing, and swimming. A conservation camp is where we teach them to conserve the habitat. It gets them out in the outdoors, it gets them exposed to the outside elements. They learn about trees, they learn about animals, why trees are important, why animals are important, why we hunt animals. Overall, it's good for kids that typically stay indoors most of the time to get outside and learn about the outdoors. Camps in Kentucky started in the late 40s. I think Camp Curry was the first. Camp Curry started around 1947 on Kentucky Lake, and it's been going strong ever since. Camp Webb is located in the northeastern section of Kentucky, right on the beautiful Lake of Grayson. Camp Earl Wallace is located about seven miles north of Monticello, Kentucky, on the main stem of Lake Cumberland. All three camps basically teach the same program to the kids. We all have the same activities. We all have the same philosophies. They're in different geographic locations, but they are primarily the same as far as the, the campers are getting the same skills. We fill up all three camps basically every year with anywhere from 16 to 1,800 kids at each camp. Monday, I would call chaotic Monday when we first pull in. You got buses and you got luggage going everywhere and this kid can't find his sleeping bag and this kid can't find his suitcase. It all end up coming where we find all these things, but it's just the chaotic Monday when we all roll in here. Welcome to Camp Curry. 
Remember, we want to have a good time. We want to learn a lot of things. But we also want to be safe. We want to respect everyone here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get you into your cabin. So you need to listen to me. We're going to start with the girls because, guys, we're gentlemen. We get the kids in the line and we kind of make sure we have everybody. They get their luggage and then we take them to the cabins. Yeah. Okay, on three. One, two, three. Okay, perfect. Roar. All right, we're getting all the girls in. We're gonna get all their names together and we're about to go over the fun we're about to have for the entire week. Okay, girls, you guys won't be in the cabin all the time, so make sure you take your money with you. If you have sunscreen, bug spray, take all that stuff with you too. Make sure you guys have the right shoes you wanna wear. You're gonna be going some of you are going down to the uh, the fish dock for the first activity. Some of you are going swimming. So the, the guys that are going swimming, obviously you need to wear shoes that you can get wet. Your guys' bunks are your space, so don't get any of one else's stuff. Our beds, don't be on our beds if it is not your bed, okay? In the morning, guys, you will clean. We gotta keep this cabin clean because clean this cabin does go to lunch first. So we just arrived at camp and we unloaded all of our stuff and met our counselors. We played some games in the cabin while we waited for some more kids to arrive. And now we're getting ready for our next activities. We'll get them situated, get them all settled in. We'll give them the layout of the land. Sometimes we have enough time, we'll give them a tour of the place just so they can find everything easier. The biggest thing on Monday, campers, they're in a new place. They may or may not know anybody. As the week goes on, they learn the system, they understand things, they're more comfortable, and we try to make them at ease. All right, welcome to Camp Curry! So, we gotta get you to your activities pretty fast, but I have a few rules that we need to go over first. This week I'm activity director, so I get to meet the kids first day and let them know how the schedule works. Then I make up fun games for them to compete, so I coordinate things like that to make them have fun during their downtime when they're not at their activities, and then also make sure they get to their activities and know how camp works in general. Cabin one and two, you're going to go to swimming first. I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go change. So one and two, go change for swimming. Cabin five, you're going boating. Hey girls, welcome to boating. When they come down to boating, they think it's the neatest thing because they're going to actually get to drive this boat. Make sure you wear the life jackets when you're on the dock, in the canoes, and in the boats. Motor boating, they're driving a nine horse bar motor and learning how to get in that safely, how to maneuver it, some of the different types of channel markers out there. We teach them about that. But before you even think about starting the boat, you got to go through something called the seven safety checks. And it's what you do right before you start the motor. First things first, you gotta make sure you have gas, right? So you're gonna pick it up, you're gonna shake it. If you can throw it at your counselor, it means it does not have enough gas in it. Campers learn the safety checks on the boat, things that they need to do before starting the motor. They're learning to be safe around the water. Check this before you go. And you know, hey, they're gonna mess up a little bit. It's not a big deal. We would much rather them do something a little bit wrong in a camp boat than get out here in a bass boat or do something like that and get hurt. So it's Safety, safety, safety. We teach about those safety things, but also how to go out and have fun in the boat. So we're gonna stay in putt putt mode until we pass that booty right there, okay? What is that booty called? Uh, no wait. You're right. All right, now pull this forward all the way. There you go. A little bit faster. A little bit faster. A little bit faster. There you go. Okay, now pull the throttle toward you. A little bit more. So we're turned all the way around. The kids had to go toward the booze over there, and then they had to do all the way around the course. At some point, the instructor said, okay, you're done practicing, and they'll switch out and rotate with all three kids. Now you can go fast. A little bit faster. Oh, not that far on the dock, the boat. and then we taught them how to dock the boats so and we had to make sure that they slowed all the way down. Slow down a little bit more. The fun part is drive it to the dock and attempt to stop it. So that's where we put our bravest camp counselors. Race for impact. Bang, okay, please.
we went over a lot. We had a class over boating, and we actually went out on the lake and did boating things. We learned how to drive a boat. We went around the buoys, went past the dock. It was so much fun. Today is just basically a swim check, and so we're gonna have them all line up on the deep end side right here, and we're gonna have them swim across. If they can't swim, they'll go ahead and tell us. With the swim check, that's what it's for, to see who can and can't, and we'll give them a bracelet. And the ones with bracelets will be in the shallow end all week until they can actually learn how to swim if they feel confident enough. One, two, three. One, two, three. swim check, you have to swim down the width of a pool doing either bear crawl or backstroke. Most people chose front crawl because it's much easier. Let me emphasize one thing. When we have kids here in camp, if they come down to an activity and they say, I don't want to participate in that, we don't force them. We let them do it at their own pace. If they want to join in, they can. If they want to sit over and watch everybody else, then that's their option. Right now we're at playground time. We have this before every meal and between all the activities. We got basketball, soccer, kickball, volleyball, they got badminton, they got four square. The counselor's job right now is to um, watch the kids, make sure nobody gets hurt. If they get hurt, we patch them up, put band-aids on them and just kind of supervise things, kind of referee the sports and stuff like that. Since it's during playground time, they don't get to go to their cabins, but they're out here playing, having fun, so we try to go out there and play with them and keep them entertained. While we're out here, the other counselors are inside getting the meals prepared and getting ready to serve the kids when they come in. A lot of them are hungry and they're ready to eat. Well, the food's really good, I'll tell you that right now. We're going to feed them while they're here, three meals a day. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We have all the food we need for the kids, all the drinks. We're self-sufficient. I think the kids love it. They can't wait for it. Say, oh, you can come back for seconds, and they all pile in there to get another hamburger and hot dog, all the good stuff that you grew up on, things like chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets, that tends to be a favorite, not only for the kids, but for the staff as well. And then, of course, they get every kind of dessert out there, too. When we come in on Monday, we feed them lunch and dinner. And then on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we feed them breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then on Friday, since they're here for just a half a day, we have a brunch. You're not going to go hungry here at camp with the food that we have, and the kids love it. Welcome to Fish Dock, guys. At fishing, like every activity, we go over the safety, but we also talk about the different types of fish that you can catch. We teach them about the different baits that you can use. We'll have wax worms, mill worms, night crawlers. With the night crawlers, everybody look at the end of your pinky, from the tip of it to where it bends the first time on your finger. That's how much night crawler you need on these little hooks. We teach them how to tie knots different fishermen knots. And then they get out there on the lake and just about every kid, if they go out there and fish while they're here, they're gonna catch a fish. I really like working fishing. I think it's awesome when I get to see a kid that you know, it's their first fish they've ever caught and just see the face they make, they just light up. And it just lights up everything on the fish dock when you get a kid that you know, they've never caught a fish and they come down here to camp and you can get them to catch one on the cane poles, just nothing like it. So we're fishing right now, trying to catch a fish. Everyone else has probably caught a fish besides me, and most of them have been bluegill. Hopefully I can get one later. I think it just takes a lot of patience, and it's pretty much luck. It does take a bit of patience in the dog days of summer. And you never know what's out here. We'll show them how to remove the hook safely and where to grab the fish, not get stuck by the dorsal fin. See how I'm holding it? I brush the fins back, that way I don't get fin. You wanna try it? There you go. Yep, toss them on back. Campers are taught how to cast using the spin cast reel. When I call your number, cast. All right, guys. Number one. Number two. 
You know, we're just trying to get the basics. Push the button when you're supposed to, let it go when it's supposed to. Don't hook the squirrels in the trees. There you go, Ooh, yeah. number five. Oh, I got one. I always got them one. <laughs> yes. Oh, come on. How about an eating size blue? <laughs> First fish of the day. So throughout the day here at camp, the kids are running around, going to their different activities, playing outside. And at nighttime, we want them to kind of have some time to chill out before they go straight to bed. And movie time is really the best way to get the kids to just kind of wind down for the night. And then when we get them back into the cabins, they won't be as hyper for the counselors in there. We put them to bed and get up and do it again the next morning. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to archery. Is it important to know what's in front of and behind the target? Yes. Yeah. So if, if there's a deer back there, should we shoot? No. no. Archery, it's come a long ways with these compound bows. A lot of these kids come now, they've seen it in school. When I first started, most of these kids hadn't even shot a bow when they got here. The main difference is we're more hitting what would you do if you're hunting kind of component. But once again, it's safety and ethical behavior. We teach them all the safety rules, and then we'll teach them different types of bows. You know what this one's called? Besides mustache. the big mustache? No. All the different types of arrows, what they are, how they work, and then we'll teach them exactly how to shoot, like all the steps to shoot and do it safely. Feet shoulder width apart, we'll extend this arm. Whenever I pull this back, right here in the corner of your mouth, that is your anchoring point. You have to use the same anchoring point to be consistent with your shot. And when you pull back, you look straight down in the arrow, the aim, and then you release, okay? Did you see how my hand went back? Don't try it, when you shoot it, don't try to let your hand go with it, because it'll mess up your shot. Also, it can hurt your fingers. Very nice. So they'll come down here a total of two times. The first time is just practice, and it's just basic archery, learning how to shoot on our range at the bullseye targets. And the second time they come down here, they shoot at some 3D targets we have out here. My favorite activity so far would probably be archery, because I almost shoot archery every weekend. The canteen is a place where the kids have an opportunity to come and buy souvenirs from camp, like patches and hats. And then on hot days, they can buy ice creams, waters, Powerades, candies, really anything they can think of. The line is always really long, and the kids really like it here. All right, children, welcome to gun safety. We see kids every week that come in that have not been around firearms. But when we go down here, we teach them the safe way to handle one. I want you guys, when you go on the trail later this week, to hold it two-handed, just like this. This is two-hand carry, the best carry. Muzzle pointed up in a safe direction, okay? They have a lecture, and then they take a written test. Firearm safety is a major component for the hunter education certificate, or the orange card, as some people call it. A lot of parents want them to get that so they'll be able to take them hunting. It's just like a hunter safety class back in your county, but we break it down into four sections here. Firearm safety, archery, nature, and survival. We break up the certification test into the four activities so that the campers aren't having to remember all that information in one setting. The boys are taking a test now, and then here in a minute, we'll take them up and actually let them apply some of these skills they learned with the shotgun, see if they can handle it safely while they try to shoot some clays. Oh. Hi. Oh. Ladies, welcome to Nature. 
In nature, we teach a lot about the different types of animals. We talk about conservation, what that means. So what these three camps are designed for is conservation education. And they're talking about food plots and habitat improvement, why animals become endangered or extinct. The main reason animals become endangered or extinct is loss of Okay, very good. They get to learn about trees. We have tree identification. We'll have them take out a leaf and we'll let them try to pick out the trees that they came from. Then they go out on the nature trail and see some wildlife out there. Usually on the trail they're going to see some deer, some squirrel, many types of birds that we have here. Welcome to Outdoor Survival. You guys were here this morning for nature. With Outdoor Survival, it is kind of a preparedness class. What do you take with you when you're going in the woods? Should you tell someone where you're going and when you'll be back? We'll teach them how to build a shelter, how to build a fire in the outdoors. You want to know how to build a fire and take proper fire starting materials. They're going to learn about how to manage bleeding, hypothermia. We'll talk about how to read a compass. If you need to follow a certain direction, you can use that compass. Now, does anybody know the exact direction a compass points to? Yes. They have seven different activities that they go to. When the kids complete those activities, they receive what's called an achievement patch. And how this works is they are given instruction the first time they come to the activity to try to learn a skill or learn some information. The second time they come, they're given a chance to earn that badge. Alrighty guys, this is canoeing as you can tell. So while I have you sitting in front of me and paying good attention, I'm gonna go over the parts of the paddle with you real quick. We get questions, why canoeing? Why not kayaks? Canoeing teaches teamwork. You wouldn't get that with kayaking. All right, so right now we taught the kids the class, taught them the front sweep, the back sweep, how to hold the paddle, taught them the parts of the paddle, the parts of the canoe, and right now they're just doing the process of the class, learning as they go, going out in between the movies, coming back, learning the different positions. Welcome back for your all second time at archery. You all are gonna be shooting once on the range today and then once out on our woods 3D trail. I love the 3D range and kids do too. They get to shoot everything from elk to alligators to dinosaurs. The safety rules for archery is pretty much 100% the same with a gun. You don't point them where you don't intend to shoot. This time at Hunter Safety, you're gonna to get to shoot the 22s and you will get to go on the trail. We want to teach them all the skills they need to hunt in a safe way, in an ethical way. That's our main goal at Hunter Safety. There will be a posted sign, no hunting beyond this point, and we'll ask that child, would that be a suitable shot or a safe shot? And they'll look at us and they'll say, uh, no, it's not. And we'll say, correct answer. We shot 22s, and they did not kick at all. A lot of them have never been around firearms, and you can just tell a lot of them are anxious about it, and that's good. We want a level of fear, because a level of fear is a level of respect. We want to be able to teach them how to do this while they're here, because they may not get that opportunity outside of camp. We're back at swimming now. We're taking our test. We have to go down and get a brick that's eight feet underwater. They'll swim down, get a brick, come back up. They'll have to do the front crawl, the elementary backstroke. They'll have to underwater swim for about 20 yards. He doesn't even know how to swim. I mean, even if they come away from camp, not the best swimmers, still struggling with their strokes, they at least know how to put that life jacket on. They know they need it on and what the importance are of having it there. Friday, which is the last day here, sadly. This week has been so much fun, and hopefully we can enjoy all the activities today. On Fridays, they get an hour and a half, two hours of free time. Um, a lot of kids come down here. We have a big fish contest of the week. Look, I caught a fish. Okay. <laughs> this week has been a lot of fun, and I'm definitely planning on coming back next year. These camps are supposed to be fun, and I think they really are because we see a lot of repeat campers. If that happens, then we've done our job well, and I think that we have served the people of Kentucky well. One of the big things about camp, and it's not just our camp, camps across the world are trying to help children become more self-reliant, more independent. We're trying to teach them responsibility. We're trying to help them learn how to make friends. To the playground. Ah! 
Regardless what camp you send your kids to, we teach the same thing in all three camps. Great staff, great safety record. They're gonna get so much out of it. And I hope if you're looking for something for your kid to do this summer, send them to one of our three conservation camps. You won't regret it. If you would like more information about sending a child to conservation camp, go to our website at fw.ky.gov and find the education tab and click summer camps. Or do you just want to help a child attend camp? Then click sponsor a camper. And remember, hunting and fishing on private property is a privilege. Always ask permission and thank the landowner. Until next week, I'm your host Chad Miles and I hope to see you in the woods or on the water. <laughs>